If you haven't seen Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, you may want to avoid this video, because I'm going to dive deep into the details surrounding this film's ending. Specifically, how many dinosaurs got away and escaped on the mainland. We're going to be tallying up all the dinos and talking about what kind of damage they could possibly do in the build-up for Jurassic World 3. So hold on to your butts, because we're starting now. At the end of Fallen Kingdom, Maisie releases several different dinosaur species into the wilds of California. After they're set loose, they scatter across the wilderness and take up their own residences in this new Neo-Jurassic world. For the record, I want to go ahead and state that I don't think the dinosaurs that were set loose upon California here will actually play a major role in Jurassic World 3, seeing as the proliferation of the already auctioned off dinosaurs feels like a much more serious plot point that will need continued. Nevertheless, the these loose animals will cause a lot of damage in between films. Just factoring in the variety and size of the dinosaurs I'm sure would cause great alarm. The first one that we need to talk about is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is, for all we know, the last Rex in the world. It will more than likely be pretty easy to find. Even though it's out in the forests of Northern Cali, I think it would be relatively easy to kill or capture the animal if, and this is a big if, the government or some other group of people with high caliber weapons is able to take action. I say this because from the looks of Fallen Kingdom's ending, the Tyrannosaur has already walked itself into the San Diego Zoo, and in my opinion, this would be a perfect setup for the next movie. Imagine how interesting it would be for the zoo staff to just tranquilize the animal and build a high-powered enclosure around it. They instantly get to reap the profits of being the only zoo on Earth with a T-Rex on display. Plus, it would lend itself to a Valley of Guanji reference when it inevitably breaks out. Now, obviously, I'm just speculating here, but personally, this is an idea that I think could easily be incorporated into the plot. Otherwise, the Rex is just too big to stay unnoticed for so long. I have a feeling it'll get captured. Next up are the Ceratopsians and Duckbills. Triceratops, Cenoceratops, and Parasaurolophus, I feel, will actually have a chance at evading capture and laying quite low. I think even if people know that they're wild and out in the wilderness, they may cut these dinosaurs some slack. As long as they aren't aggravated or wander into a local suburb, I can imagine that it would be relatively peaceful for these creatures to coexist with man. Plus, it would bring in some extra cash from tourists if they got to spot a wild dinosaur on their trip to the west coast. Next up are the galleys. Personally, I see no reason for humans to not wrangle these things up like the oversized ostriches that they are. What they'll do with them, I'm not so sure, but I have a feeling that they too will be put on display for others to see. And now we get into the really big problems. I know for a fact that some Carnotaurs and Juvenile Allosaurs got released at the end of the movie, and there may even have been a Baryonyx running around somewhere. If these aren't killed by the time the next movie comes around, they will undoubtedly be responsible for a large amount of human casualties. Baryonyx has the ability to stay in the sewers, rivers, and lakes of this particular state, but the Allos and Carnos will definitely prefer to stay in the forests and hunt any local wildlife or stray hikers that they can. Honestly, I can totally see these creatures laying low and being terrible myths campers tell each other when they venture out there. They're small and can be quick to evade any threat that may come their way, but I also believe believe that California simply won't send anyone out there to kill them. If they do, there's no way that everyone who goes into those woods are coming out alive. Plus, I don't even know if any of the authorities have any information on what dinosaurs were housed in the Lockwood estate, let alone how many. It was an illegal operation with all of its buyers fleeing the scene. It's going to be a very crazy development for the Golden State. Next up is Stiggy. Now personally, I think the Stiggy Moloch will definitely return in the next film, and it's probably going to be found by some humans before the events of the plot kick off. What they'll do with it is anyone's guess, but it certainly won't be an easy animal to control. The Apatosaurus that got loose in the film, however, will probably cause a lot of damage to the public property, and unfortunately, I have a feeling that someone will kill it before the next movie even begins. If they don't, then it will more than likely share the same fate as what could theoretically theoretically happen to the Rex and stay housed in captivity. This guy is just way too big to stay wild for too long. Now honestly, it can go either way with the Stegosaurs and Ankylosaurs. Some probably fell prey to the carnivores in the wild, but others may continue to live in the forests or even become captured by local authorities. Regardless, we will definitely be seeing more of them. The Pteranodons were shown to be nesting in Las Vegas in the post credit scene, but in my opinion, they will be widespread making nests wherever they see fit in the surrounding American states. 
Compies will probably be the most serious problem for humans going into Jurassic Park 6. These little guys can breed rapidly and are small enough to avoid detection in even the busiest of touristy cities. I can imagine the population of these guys increasing a lot in the coming years. They were wild on Nublar for three years prior, so sexual metamorphosis may have already transpired. If the dinosaurs still have this ability. Jurassic World never elaborated on it, so I'm still counting it as a possibility. And finally, the Mosasaurus will be a rough creature to deal with. Anything short of a helicopter with a 50 cal or a torpedo won't stop this animal. You're going to need that heavy artillery. I have a hard time believing the state of California would even attempt to drop a bomb in the waters along their beaches or something similar, and actually finding this big creature may be harder than a lot of people think. Sure, it showed itself to the surfers at the end, but just imagine how easy it would be for that reptile to just swim out to sea and feast on whales for the rest of its life. I'm not so sure it will be easy to destroy. And with all of that being said, I personally feel like California and the surrounding states are going to have quite a bit of trouble these next three years. For the problem to properly be taken care of and fixed, you would need more than a phone call to the National Guard and the operation would probably take far longer than a short month or even a year. Think of it this way. If if you got orders to go out and wrangle up all of the dinosaurs that got loose in these vast forests, what would you be looking for and what would you even expect? You could be looking for animals whose numbers have already declined due to predation or fights. You could also be unaware of the increased number of breeding individuals still at large. How do you even know what kinds of dinosaurs are out there? Eli Mills stated that he wanted to take 11 species off of the island. I count 15 in the wild as of now, and not all of them in the woods. Among those is Blue, the Velociraptor, and what happens to her is anyone's guess at this point. I know that the story between she and Owen has yet to be concluded, so I'm assuming she'll stay wild evading captivity for some time, but where she'll run off to I haven't the slightest idea. Now, I'm curious to hear what all of your thoughts are on these wild dinosaurs. What animals do you think will play a major role in the next movie, and what effect do you think they'll have on the ecosystem? Let me know in the comments down below guys, there's really no right answers as of now, so anything goes. Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, James Long and Chris Webb, as well as all of my engine executives like Ellis Osley. I'd also like to thank my park workers and engine hunters as well. Andrew Campbell, Jeffrey Hollingsworth, and Jack Anthony Ewens. It means the world to me that you guys enjoy what I do so much, and I seriously am eternally grateful for every shred of support that you've shown me. I could never say thank you enough. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, Take it easy.